Camera's on. I don't know how to start this. All right, so we don't really have much of a plan uh, on how to go about making this video, but our only plan should be to keep it as real as possible. I really don't want to like sugarcoat anything because I feel like that could be really damaging. You wanted to make this video because you realize that there are many other people out there struggling with issues regarding self-image. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now I can tell there's a lot of pressure on you. Yeah. Because you, I just you, don't want, like, you want to say everything. I don't want to miss anything because I just feel like, I don't know, I'm just walking such a fine line because I remember how like fragile I was. You yeah. know what I mean? And I don't want to say anything that's going to like, with someone. I know what you mean. You know? Or give anyone like a false sense of reality or some shit. Like we have to keep it like 1 million percent real because yeah. shit got real for me. We have to keep it There's no more writing shit down ever again for this channel. That's it. We podcast, we free ball. That's it. Okay. It'll look good. Listen, we're not we're not writing it down. I just have points here because yeah. this has been something that you've been up against every single day for the past six months of your life. Yeah, I know. I've been by your side through mm -hmm. this entire thing. Mm -hmm. And I've almost lived your story just through an alternate perspective. So I have some questions and some conversations that I think that I can bring up that'll help you tell your story because I know you have a lot on your mind right now. Okay? Okay. Okay. For now, let's talk about Ethan Dolan. Ethan Dolan shared this screenshot to Twitter. It shows the top three search results when you Google his name. Ethan Dolan skin, Ethan Dolan face, Ethan Dolan ugly. Um, he, um, he has some acne now. That's it, he's got acne. <laughs> that is the T. And a lot of people are being super duper disrespectful and even going as far as saying Ethan is now ugly. Grayson's the good looking brother. Ethan's ugly, blah, 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 blah. Do I have the colors right? Yeah. Wow, that's the first time I looked at myself in a viewfinder in the past six months and didn't immediately want to shut the camera off. <laughs> Let me see again. I think you look good. You... <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> All right. What did you want to ask? This feels too set up, just take it off the tripod. I don't want it to be like a video. Hey guys, right before we get into the story, we would like to thank Honey for sponsoring this video. We all shop online, especially as of lately. If you've ever felt taunted by that promo codes bar that you see when you're checking out, Honey has come along to make your life much easier. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for online coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free browser extension that searches for promo codes for you and applies them directly to your cart when you're checking out. Imagine you're shopping online on one of your favorite sites, like Target, DoorDash, or Lululemon. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupon. Honey then scans its database to search for the best coupons for that site and then your prices drop. I myself recently purchased skate shoes and saved $15 on them with Honey, which was sweet. Honey has found its over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. If you don't have Honey already, you could straight up be missing out on free money. And we don't want that happening to you guys. It's literally free and you can go to joinhoney.com slash Dolan and install it in just two clicks. By getting it, you'd be doing us a solid and supporting our channel, which we really appreciate. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Dolan. That's joinhoney.com slash Dolan. Again, Honey, thank you so much for sponsoring this video and supporting my story. I want to tell a story. I just, I, you know, I don't, I don't know where, I don't even know where to start really. Throughout this journey, I recognized that you were always looking in your phone. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but no, you are right. That's so, it. I guess that's something that I tend to like, uh, that's something that I tend to do when I, I don't know, I feel like insecure or some shit. I remember freshman year, like when we went to school and like everyone was always like 
trying to say shit to us in the hallways and stuff, I would always look in my selfie camera to make sure I didn't have like anything on my face or like yeah. something they could pick at and make fun of me for. So, so yeah, I, I guess I, I was kind of back at that spot. Because something I believe is like everyone's camera roll tells a story. Mm -hmm. You know, whether that be of a trip filled with good memories, you know, whatever that story may be, I think that your camera roll probably would help you tell the story that you're trying to mm -hmm. say right now. I would do this thing where I would take a photo of the front of my face, the side of my face, and then the other side of my face, I guess to check my acne. This was like the beginning of it. Why was it all I would do? So the beginning was around December. It's now July, so yeah, six months, seven months. By the looks of it, I barely had any acne at all. But I vividly remember at this point in my life, I was really insecure about the way my face looked. As ridiculous as that sounds, looking at this photo right now, I was like insecure about my acne. And I see like one, two, three, four, five pimples. You, looking back in retrospect, literally yeah. can't even find something wrong with the photo. Yeah. But you in that very moment thought it was the worst photo of you that ever existed. That's true. Think about that. Yeah. In these photos, I remember it happened really fast. Still not even really that bad, just little bumps. Not bad compared to what it got to. I'm zapping my face with something here. Oh wow. Looks like I really, looks like I really tried everything. Why do you think you took so many photos? Like why do you think that it consumed your life in that way? I think I was taking my photos in hopes to track improvement because my biggest fear with acne from the beginning, from the, the moment I got my first pimple, was it getting worse and worse and worse over time. Why were you fearful that it would get worse? I just feel like, you know, you guys know we've been in front of a camera every day since we were, what, like 14 years old. Whether it's Snapchat, like Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Obviously I noticed. I think I was just fearful that it would get worse to a point where everyone else would start noticing. So yeah, then, then it definitely did get worse. And I guess my biggest fear with the whole acne thing came true. He also shared the following tweet by a fan. This is really mean, but I have trypophobia and I literally have to cover Ethan Dolan's forehead when I look at him because of his spots. Sorry, E. One tweet said, the f happened to Ethan Dolan's skin. Twin Grayson said um, that he's um, sad and that, you know, you shouldn't bully um, his twin. <laughs> oh, it's not relatable. Yes. And I think this is the part of the story where it got to the point where I, as your brother, I was too- I think you'd be more pissed off than I was. Yeah. There's a misconception that someone in the public eye is supposed to know how to act and is supposed to take the high road always. Mm -hmm. It's not that you were just always on camera and in front of camera and in front of people that way. You were the light to any room. I mean, you would walk in and you enjoyed entertaining the room and making people laugh. That's who you were. It broke my heart when we would hang out with people and you would have to you, you felt obligated to disclose the fact that you were dealing with acne. Yeah, literally, I would, if, if I was hanging out with a friend who I hadn't seen in a while, I would actually, like, apologize for the way that my skin went. Alright, yeah. I'm going to read the mean tweets. I mean, it's not to bring attention to negativity, but it's just to kind of, like, and be real. You're letting the world know what you had to deal with. Yeah. You never spoke on this before. Yeah. I, mean, I never want to bring attention to negativity, you know what I mean? I never let you read these. I know. I feel like I just want to read them tomorrow. When I... If you don't want to read them now, you don't have to. I mean, you don't have to read them in general. No, dude, I want to read them. I, it's important to show like the, how realistic this is, like, you know. I want to keep it real. So I'm going to read them. I'm at a point now where I can read them and I'll be fine. But I definitely would like to do it tomorrow when I can just 
clear my head afterwards. Have a good day. All right, I'm gonna look at these tweets. I'm gonna look at, cut it. You fucked me up. I didn't, dude, listen, it's, it's a hard part of the story to tell because there's a lot of shit involved. There's a lot of shit you were up against. It was, you're up against yourself. You obviously know I don't, I'm, not, I'm not against you. But now I'm at a point where I feel like nothing that anyone can say can bother me and make me think of myself in a different way than I already think. Um, what do you think the reason for that is? I don't know what to say. You don't stump me like that. Okay, so I'm going to read these tweets that were under the hashtag or were the reason that Ethan Dolan Ugly was trending on Twitter um, when I was at a really low point in my life. I want to conquer these tweets and prove to myself that I'm through with this part of my life and that these words aren't going to affect me anymore. At Ethan Dolan, damn that forehead looked ugly. <laughs> yeah. Um, th that shit used to actually bother me. Not you guys using Ethan Dolan acne pic as a reaction photo. Y'all are going to hell. Uh, I was a meme, I guess, at one point. If I see one more 12 year old Dolan stand tweeting their clapped video star edit with a horrible Miami glitter filter over ugly ass pus filled Ethan Dolan, I will commit a hate crime. That person seems like they were probably dealing with a little bit more in their life than I was um, at the time. I hate when Ethan Dolan pops up on my snaps. His. <laughs> oh god. His face acne f***ing disgusts me, like, get that shit out of here, bro. No f***ing cap. Hashtag blessed for a clear face, though. Alright. Must suck going from the straight twin to just the ugly twin. Y'all are harsh. But maybe he needed to be humbled a bit. I don't, I don't really know what that means. I think they're also assuming our uh, sexual orientation. I hope Ethan Dolan realized that birth control clear your acne. Like the f***, it's not hard. <laughs> Maybe I should have went on birth control. <laughs> I should have tried that first. F the antibiotics. Worst case of acne I've ever seen. Sandpaper. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Sandpaper. I should have tried that too. Uh, worst case of acne ever seen. Uh, it, it, oh God. Okay. Sorry, but your acne is so bad that I have to delete you off all my social media. It looks pandemic. That was before. That was before it. the pandemic. Do something about that forehead acne, please. You know, I should have done something. I should have tried something. You should have just washed your face. I should have just washed my face, duh. You seem like the opposite of Frazzle right now. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Which is, I, I never thought I'd reach this point. That forehead looked nasty, bro. Clean yourself. I should have just fucking took a shower. That is genius. Yeah, the, the eight months no shower streak you're on probably, probably what calls it. Exactly, dude. Man's got a whole fucking galaxy on his forehead. <laughs> Why is that funny? Bro, I can't, I can't believe that that used to get me down. It makes sense as to why it would, but right now I just can't even like imagine that upsetting me. Tim, the list really wow. goes, the list really goes on here. Yeah, but like I don't, I'm actually having fun with this. Like I wish there was more tweets, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> like literally every single one of these would have made me more insecure back in the day when I was going through it, when I was at the low point. And right now, I'm literally having fun with it and that, it's something that I never thought I'd be able to say. I remember after this, while this hashtag was trending, I took a selfie of the current state that my face was in, and I tweeted it, trying to embrace myself. And, you know, I was like, you know what, it. I'm just gonna embrace it. I think it felt good a little bit, but I don't really think it did much. Um, it was kind of just like a, fuck you guys, I don't care, but I still definitely cared. And I think the, the worst part of it was that I didn't know when it was gonna stop. I had been to two to three dermatologists and I had been put on at least, I think, four medications. One being a really strong antibiotic that completely fucked up my stomach. Um, and honestly, I think my acne started to get worse when I was on that. Um, then I was on these face creams that had all these sorts of acids in them. And my face, I remember, would be burning so bad that I couldn't even like sleep sometimes at night. Um, and then if I would put like too much moisturizer on my face would break out even worse Yeah, it was just like I felt like that it was it was never ending I then went to a different dermatologist and I was prescribed something called Accutane which is 
the most intense acne medication there is. I think it works on up to 90% of people who take it. But I also knew that Accutane caused a lot of issues. Uh, it's kind of the last resort. I was also informed that Accutane could lead to depression. It was clinically proven to cause depression, which I felt like I was on the brink of already. I also heard that it makes your skin worse, like a lot worse before it gets better. It can cause like kidney problems. A serious side effect. It's very, very serious side effect. It's not like a moisturizer where it can clog your pores. It's an internal medication that, yeah, it can, it can f you up. I, I really, I felt like I had no choice, so I, I began taking Accutane. And sure enough, my skin got a lot worse. Like a lot, a lot worse. Great, we had, what, how many videos did we have planned at that point that we wanted to film? A lot. We had a lot. We had like, like a big series that we really wanted to do. And then how long of a break, here, once the next to me, how long of a break did we take from YouTube? because of this um, okay like a three month break wow yeah not only did i not post on youtube for three months um and kind of screw over my youtube partner uh, i didn't do shit for three months and then because of that i think my insecurities definitely bred other bad habits being completely honest i started eating like shit. and sitting around getting absolutely no work done i wasn't making any money I had absolutely nothing to feel good about. And it was just because I had blemishes on my face. I was hiding from myself too. I was hiding from the part of my brain that was like, what are you gonna do now? Like, there's a part of your brain that does thrive off feeling like shit. And, and I let that part take over. I definitely hit rock bottom. Self image, self confidence wise, rock bottom. Being at a point where there was nothing I could have possibly done to myself to make myself feel worse about myself. Also, like, I don't even have a face anymore. It's just pimples. Like, I don't even know, I can't even see my face under this. There was a lot more that I could do to make myself feel better about myself. Even just the little things. Like, I could literally go for a walk for two minutes or just go out in public to the grocery store and that would be progress. I think when I began doing those things, just the little things, it started to feed the part of my brain that thrived off feeling good about myself. Just start in the most chill way that you can. Okay. Like that, there's no pressure, dude. You honestly got me out of the place that I was in. Something that you did alone a lot was rock climbing. Uh, Grayson would go rock climbing all the time and then tell me how fun it was and I just couldn't get myself to get up out of my bed and go with him. Um, and then I, I finally went with Grayson one time. And I had, I had a good ass time. So I guess that just proved to myself that, you know, hey, I can do this. It's just gonna take little steps. I told Grayson, yo, let's start going rock climbing a lot more. Um, someone asked us for a photo when we were out rock climbing one time, and I remember being like really stressed out about it, because like, my, fucking, my face is not going to look good, this is going to suck, I don't want this photo to get out. Um, but for some reason, I just enjoyed moving and doing something and feeling like I was accomplishing something so much to the point where... I didn't let that get in the way of me going. Um, and then one time on the way home from rock climbing, I was like, I'm having a really good time with this. And Grayson was like, dude, I'm so happy that you're finally coming with me. I'm so happy that you're finally doing stuff with me again. And I was like, I don't know why this, out of all things, is, is bringing me the most happiness at this point in my life. And you said, it's the little things that initiate the climb out of a low place. And you compared it to rock climbing, like climbing a wall. You said. You don't just start at the bottom and jump up to the top. You have to take it hold by hold. All the times that I've been at a low point, I've really had to try as hard as I could, and sometimes it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's easier said than done, but I tried really, really hard to focus on the little things that could bring me enjoyment, hmm. you know, or, or make me feel proud of myself, like getting up, at, getting up early, having a nice cup of coffee, and starting my day off peacefully, and then, you know, making my bed. When you're rock climbing, you always have three limbs on the wall. 
You were kind of dangling where you were at. Yeah. That's how low you were. Yeah, I think so. And you just needed to get another hand on the wall, and then eventually look down and find another place to put your foot on the wall. Yeah. Hold by hold, you were going to get to the top of the wall. Mm -hmm. You were going to overcome the wall. Yeah. So I took this as I needed to have more limbs on the wall. So another one of those holds for me was skating. And it was something that I did to escape when I was younger and I felt like I didn't have the time for it in my life anymore, but I had all the time in the world because all I was doing was sitting around on my ass doing absolutely nothing, feeling like shit about myself. So I started skating again. And as I started to improve and learn new tricks, I felt like I was improving. Uh, I felt like I was making progression in my life. Um, and then also fitness, I started calisthenics. I stopped weight training, I stopped running on treadmills because that stuff always bored me and it turned me off to working out. So I said, I wanna make this fun for myself. So I started learning how to do calisthenics, which is body weight movements, and just learning how to move in different ways that I was never able to do before. Like handstands and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, Grayson's pretty good at those. I started to realize that although acne was out of my control and I couldn't speed up the process of this Accutane working and my skin finally getting clear, what I had to do was focus on things that were in my control. Mm -hmm. but looking at it in hindsight, I was probably addicted to feeling like shit, and then I started to become addicted to feeling good again. And all it took was that first hold. Another hold for me, a big one, was definitely recording the podcast. I didn't feel the pressure of having to be in front of the camera yet, but I was still able to connect with you guys, which I missed so much. As I started to feel better and better and feel all this progression in my life, it built my confidence. I was ready to get in front of the camera again, um, at least enough for me to want to make videos again. That part of my life that I had to forfeit, I, I felt like I no longer had to. We started making videos again, and now we're at a point where we're pretty much making more videos than ever. Now I feel like I'm in the best shape that I've ever been physically, as well as mentally, and I kind of wanted to document this moment. It's inevitable, we're gonna have ups and downs, but I want to remind myself that I've climbed this far and I'll be able to do it again if anything ever happens. So to document it, I did what I was afraid to do for these past six months and I got in front of a camera. You got in front of the camera in the most extreme way. Yeah, I really wanted to just prove to myself that I was comfortable with who I was again. So I did a photo shoot. I didn't edit anything. I didn't edit any of my blemishes like I had been doing for the past six months. But for this one, I wanted to embrace my appearance for the first time in a really long time. So I did that. I uploaded a photo of my scars. It's about time. It's about that time. Oh gosh. How do you feel? Um, I don't know, I guess this word described would be like freeing. Free? I don't know. Yeah? Yeah, dude. I don't know, I, I wrote a really long caption and like I finally feel like every time I get to do something that has purpose behind it, like it makes me feel like good. It's almost like I'm addicted to being vulnerable now. Did I just exceed the character limit for an Instagram caption? <laughs> I think I did. You, there's, a, there's a character limit? I had no clue. I just, I got too deep, I guess. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but when I wrote the caption, it's like a, it's a really long caption. And I talked about how as soon as I stopped hiding, I felt a crazy like sense of relief because I started to realize that I wasn't alone and people were coming out and telling me that they were going through the same things that I was. And it was a, a really comforting, message to hear so okay Let's see I'm sad I had to take my last sentence off so I'm gonna read it right now if you have acne scars or anything that bothers you about your appearance know that one day you will be free from the insecurities and I truly believe that you will get through it it doesn't define you and you're not alone that was a message that I wish I heard a really long time ago, although I can't say that I'd be able to digest it. Um, it took doing the little things to get me out of the place that I was at. So, I wanted to 
give someone who may be needing that message that message and just do your best to believe in it because it's true scars and all it's going up and we're live you posted it posted it wow yeah feels good feels good Um, and then another thing that I had trouble with was getting used to wearing makeup and how it threatened my masculinity. Um, I've always thought toxic masculinity was so cheesy. I think when guys talk about feeling like a man, they're just talking about feeling like the most confident versions of themselves. To me, having acne, I was not the most confident version of myself. If I were to wear a little bit of makeup, I would have been a lot more confident. I realized that wearing makeup didn't make me less manly, if anything it probably made me more manly. That I was able to set my ego and my pride of a man aside and just put a little bit of powder on my face to feel better about how I looked. Yeah, I wanted to be completely transparent and tell people that I've been wearing makeup as well, so I posted a photo doing that. Yo. Yo, post two going up. Yeah? Yeah. I wrote a caption kind of to myself for this one. Um, and it basically just comes from being a, a guy, I guess. So since I'm, I'm posting and finally coming clean about wearing makeup here and there because I've been insecure about my skin, I felt like I had to write something to my old self who for some reason had a problem with that. I, I've worn makeup in the past, but every time I've done it, it's either been experimental for comedy purposes or like I've made jokes about it to kind of hide the fact that I was doing it. I've worn it in Instagram photos, I've worn it just out in public. When I was getting used to doing that, I think my ego had a problem with it. But like yeah, I'm a man and it, I wore makeup. So what my caption was, was to my old, I guess, ignorant self who didn't even really put thought into what being a man was to me. Um, and I said, why forfeit my confidence and quality of life just to fit the cliche reputation of a man? Because that's really what I was doing. Um, so I guess if you're a guy and you have acne and you feel like you want to just cover it up with a little bit of powder to take the harshness away, do it, dude. Who gives a fuck? You're still a man. You're even more of a man. And that's why I wrote this second sentence. What I've learned is that it's definitely manlier to just do whatever makes me feel the most confident version of myself. So I'm just hoping that any other guy out there um, can just feel fucking normal about wearing makeup. It's time to end the stigma with that. I just, if, if you look better with it on, then fuck it, dude. If you're gonna feel better about yourself with it on, you're gonna be more confident, you're gonna act more like yourself just because you have a little bit of dust on your face, do it. I think this is gonna help more people than you realize. You think so? I really do. I hope so, man. I've definitely grown the most I've ever grown in my entire life over the past six months. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I can't change anything about the past. And I know I suffered a lot, but I'm glad I did. I think that the more you suffer, the more you grow. So next time I'm going through something and I feel like I'm suffering, um, I have to look at it as I'm growing. I have a question for you. What's up? Would you take it back? N absolutely not. Because if I never went through that, I would not have had the opportunity to grow in the way that I did over the past six months. I've learned so, a lot. So in a weird way, would you say that you're... H happy that I got acne? Now I would say that, yes. For sure. You told me it was ruining your life, and look what it did. It made it better. I right, Grayson, I'm not even kidding. We're at, me and you, even, our, our relationship is at a point that it's never been at. Yep. As difficult as this story has been to tell, I'm glad that I did because it, it even just made me realize how grateful I've been for everything that's happened to me. For those of you that know, Ethan and I are like the closest two humans in the world. I 
honestly would say, I, I'm confident in saying that actually. And that's due to the fact that everything that we've experienced in life, everything that we've gone through, we've gone through together. Um, you know, the good, the bad, the great, we've always been by each other's sides and we've always been able to relate to one another. So our level of empathy towards each other is just kind of like, I might be a little bit too connected. If I walk in and he's happy, I'm happy. If I walk in and he's sad, I'm sad. And that's just the way things go. But for this journey, um, things were different. We're identical twins and for some reason, I didn't have to face this skin condition that Ethan had with his acne. Who knows why, but that's just kind of how things happen. And for the first time ever, one of us was left going through something alone. As much as I tried to support Ethan and be there for him, I just, I, I couldn't relate to how he was feeling exactly because I wasn't going through it myself. I tried to be open and I tried to hear him out, but at times I just couldn't, I couldn't comprehend the way that he was feeling about himself. So I have a lot of respect for the way that he was able to push through this and come out such a great person on the other side of his journey. So Ethan, I'm making this, you don't know that I am. Sorry if it's cheesy and you cringe a little bit, but I wanna let you know, man, that I'm really proud of you and you've inspired me. Your story has really inspired me and I hope it can do the same for others watching. Love you, man. E. Yeah. Come here. Oh shit. <laughs> I believe we have one thing left to do. What's that? Here, sit down. Okay. Whoa. I mean, you don't have to, but it looks it's easier to film. Yes, sir. Um, find a photo of, of you when you were in what you thought was the peak of your acne struggles. Okay. When people think of scars, I think of like, you know, a scar on your skin, and it tells a story of like a time you were you were injured. Mm -hmm. And I think that emotional scars are kind of like the same thing, although you can't see them. Mm -hmm. They're on the outside, you wear them kind of on the inside. And in this time in your life, your physical scars kind of also tell the story of your emotional scars. So I think it's time to do some afters. All right, um, I think I think these videos that I'm looking at right now are probably the peak. Um, well, go take so many videos and go get those afters, boy. All right. All right, I was in a bathroom, so we'll go in the bathroom. Okay, let's see what I did. I went from this side to that side. All right, yeah, I think that was uh, similar enough. I guess we'll see what it looks like. All right, let's do before and afters here. I'm gonna do that signature front side side that I kept taking over and over again on my camera roll for some reason. All right. Let's check out the photos I did. I look like a completely different person. Um, partially because I was bald in these other photos and I had a beard but also because I just my, my I feel like my vibe is completely different it is and it's not even because my skin is clear as you can see in these afters I still have scars but if growing in the way that I did personally over the past six months means that I have to have these scars on my face then I don't care I wouldn't trade that I feel like you are 1000% Ethan right now yeah I'm feeling like Ethan not feeling comfortable in my skin forced me to find comfort in other things about me. I had to think about and explore other parts of myself that I didn't even know existed because I wasn't comfortable with the surface of myself. And I'm fucking happy that I had to do that. I felt like that was a uh, deserving of a secret handshake. <laughs> Thanks, Gray. Thanks for helping me get my story out. Thank you guys for listening to my story. Um, it was tough to say because I wanted to remember everything and I wanted to be as real as possible. And when the camera's on, sometimes it's hard to get vulnerable, but I hope I was able to show you guys who the real me really is. And drop that guard that I've had up over the past six months on social media. Thanks, bro. Couldn't have told it without you. And I couldn't have got through this the way I did without you.
Want to do a little piece? Yeah, I'll do a little piece. Piece. Is there a mirror or something they can do? Yeah, it's oh. me. Alright. Cool. A little piece. <laughs>